Do you ever become frustrated with all the bad news that we hear today? Well, we have good news. Stay tuned. Calling all the nations, make a declaration. I received the call to go to the nations to share the love of Jesus with as many people as I can. I'm here with Recito, hand in hand with the people of Haiti. He has sent us here, and thank you for supporting Calling All the Nations here in India. Hey everyone back in the United States, thank you so much for sending us here to the Dominican Republic. I'm here with a few of my friends. Some time. We're in San Salvador, El Salvador, and these students behind me today, as we shared the gospel with them, they prayed to receive Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for sending us as calling all the nations to these places of the world that need Jesus. Hey everyone, welcome to Calling All the Nations. My name is Thomas Dickerson. Years ago I was on a highway, I had an encounter with God. I thought that I was a Christian growing up in America in church my whole life, but I didn't know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. It was that night on the highway as I was driving that I said, Jesus, I need to be born again. I want you to come in and change my life. And I was changed that night. Now I know Jesus and God called me to go to the nations and tell other people about Jesus Christ. Our ministry, we travel all over the world from India to Africa to the Philippines and everywhere in between all over the United States for one purpose to let people know that God loves them and that they can truly have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ I'm sitting here with Dr. John Boyd he has been a minister for over 40 years serving Jesus Christ and he happens to be my father-in-law John this is going to be an awesome episode as we take them into a huge country what is it oh it's a beautiful country too it has uh, everything to offer, all kinds of exotic things, including the gods that we've talked about, like last week. And so there we found ourselves again at, with our host, a guy named... Anil. Anil, yeah, that's him. And so we were ready to serve again, this time with the Gospel Crusade. And Neil was a young guy, 27 years old, and he had a vision to reach this remote part of Indian Andhra Pradesh thousands of villagers who had never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we want to just recap what we did last week, which was awesome. We have some video footage of some of the places that we went. We went to local villages and some of the home churches, and we got to go in and just sort of encourage the few Christians that were there and lead a lot of other people to Jesus Christ. They worship 300 million gods in India, and so many of the people came in from the streets to, to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Many of them never even hearing about Jesus Christ before and so it was an exciting time to be able to share Jesus in a country that we had never been before. Listen, we've got an amazing episode today. You don't want to miss this. Stay tuned for more when we take you to India spreading the gospel of Jesus. Yeah, I just want to let you know about our ministry calling all the nations. A few years ago I got saved late in my life at 26 years old. I'd grown up in church my whole life but never knew Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And the Lord saved me that night when I was 26 years old, told me to go to the nations and tell people about Jesus. And so my wife and I really felt led to start a ministry called Calling All the Nations, where I go to Africa and India, all over the United States, speaking to youth groups and churches and Sunday nights and wherever really I get invited. And we've seen thousands of people receive Jesus. I think there's a lot of people out there like me that they've heard about Jesus, but they don't really know him as their personal Lord and Savior. So anyway, that's what our ministry does. You can go to callingallthenations.com and uh, you can check out my music, my testimony. Uh, we've got uh, CD albums on there that we've released and all the proceeds from our CDs go to help send us to the Philippines and Africa and India. It's just awesome when people come to Jesus. That's our mission to evangelize the world and you can be a part of it. That's Calling All the Nations. Go to callingallthenations.com and find out more about our ministry. Pray about being a part of what God's doing in our ministry. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Calling All the Nations. You know, we have a lot of different ways of calling on the nations that we try to reach people for Jesus. We do open air evangelism crusades where we set up a stage and a generator and sound system in the third world country so that people can hear the gospel all the way miles away. And that's an amazing ministry. We go into schools. We minister to 
hundreds of students all over the world and orphans that don't have any parents to claim them. We also reach teenagers. We travel the United States and speak at churches, letting Christians know that the gospel is alive. But one of the most important ministries we have are pastors' conferences. And the person that heads that up is Dr. John Boyd. He is a minister of over 40 years. He loves Jesus, and he's my father-in-law. He's also the author of three different books. One of them is All Things New that you can get on callingallthenations.com along with all the other books that he's written. I encourage you to get these books because they'll encourage your faith. He's a graduate of Covington Theological Seminary, has a doctorate from there. John, I'm so excited for you to share why this pastor's conference ministry is so vital to calling all the nations. Tell us more about that. Well, you know, Thomas, we do go and we share the gospel. This is the commission of the Lord Jesus. He says, go and make disciples. So we can't just leave that company. We can't just leave that country after a week or two of solid ministry and a lot of converts because what's going to happen to them then? Well, will they be discipled? So what we have found is some of the pastors uh, that we ran into in our earlier missions, they had no training, no formal training, and some of them weren't even believers. They'd never been baptized. And so we thought, hey, let's not leave these converts in the hands of folks that are not fully prepared to bring them into Christianity, to disciple them. And so that's what these conferences are all about. I get a chance, Thomas, to share with them from some of my experiences, and of course from the Word of God, some things like the urgency of the gospel, about deacons and how to train them, about baptism, the Lord's Supper, these kinds of areas that they didn't know anything about previously. So really, it's a great time for me to relive what I have learned and to pass that on to these young pastors. It's an incredible ministry, and this is the ministry that truly continues the gospel after we leave and come back to America. And we get the best news from the pastors that where they're saying uh, that they're planting new churches, and hundreds and hundreds of more people are coming to faith because they That's saw right. what we did when we were there. We trained them. They were encouraged. They plant new churches, and That's guess right. what? The gospel goes out into that nation. That's why when one soul is changed for Jesus Christ, it can change a nation. That's, That's calling right. all the nations. And so we want to tell you a little bit about open air crusades. How do you do an open air crusade in a third world country like India? Well, we raised the support first of all to even go to travel there. In this case, it was 10,000 miles away. And so that's part of where the support goes. When we finally get into the village, we have to bring in sound systems from hours away to go to these villages where people are living in huts. And then we have a generator with fuel that, that powers the stage and the sound system. And this is amazing. We're going to actually take you into India where we did an open air crusade where I asked Anil, how many can hear the gospel? He said up to 30,000 villagers can hear the gospel. We had up to 1,500 and 2,000 Indian villagers in the field, a crop field, every single night to hear the gospel. John, it was awesome because they heard the music that we play for a couple hours, Christian music, and they all are wondering what's happening, and they come into the field. What was your impression of, of what happened in India? Well, of course it was exciting for us. It was a, a different atmosphere. It was a different country. People dressed differently. You hear them speaking. It was really amazing. And I guess what was really amazing is uh, the see the way they responded to the preaching of the Word of God. His Holy Spirit moving through you, Thomas, and me as we worked with him. Oh, wow, what a feeling, what a sensation. It was incredible. And Neil said that the gospel had never been preached in this area of India. And with all the different gods, it was as if they were looking for the answer. Who is God? And we said, Jesus is God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will never die but have everlasting life. We share Christian music. Then I get up and I share my personal testimony about how I grew up in, in, in believing in God, but I didn't know Jesus. And so at the end of this, we give an invitation to everybody that's sitting there. I even say, if you're in your village huts, you can receive Jesus today. And all those trained pastors that we've been meeting with in the days before, I ask them to come up to the front. And when I give that invitation, we watch hundreds and hundreds of Indian villagers come to faith right. in Jesus Christ. It was an absolutely incredible uh, journey there into the heart of India. Guess what? In just those few nights, we just had so many people receive Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, this is an amazing thing. And I want to talk about uh, one of the things that happened there when we were uh, in India. And this was really a miraculous thing. Tell us 
a little bit about this part. Well, you see, we in preaching the gospel, you find that sometimes it's accompanied by miraculous works of the Lord himself. Yes. And it just so happened that we needed a miracle because suddenly there were threats of storm. And it, when there's a storm in India, it's really a storm. <laughs> That's true. In, in no time at all, like, you can be 20 inches deep in water. And so there were threatening skies, and they were saying, we may not be able to have the crusade tonight. And so, amazing, something terrific happened. On the first night, this, this was truly amazing. There were so many insects and bugs that they were in our hair, they were in our shirts, they were even flying into our mouth. We went off the stage, John said, let's pray, let's call on the Lord. We held hands with Anil, our Indian host, right. and we said, Jesus, we're here to preach the gospel. By the time I got up to preach, not a bug no in bugs. the entire crop field. The second night, a major storm was, gonna, storm was gonna come through. I mean, hurricane force winds, two feet of rain. It was just a major storm, and we just got off the stage. We said, Lord, we're here for for the second night we're here to preach the good news of Jesus and we just said Lord please hold the rain and guess what God held the rain and Neil came to us on the third morning he said brothers the people are talking they're saying the God of John and Thomas this Jesus must be the real God for he can hold the rain and by the time we got done with those three nights we had over 1200 Indian people receive Jesus Christ God is the God of creation and Jesus is real because he wanted to make a way for these Indian people to receive Jesus what an amazing testimony of how God, the God of creation, loves all mankind. He loved these people, and he sent us there to preach Jesus. There have been few times where I stood in awe of God. We've got much more to come, but praise God for that. Over 1,700 Indian people received Jesus in just those few days. We'll be back. Jesus died. God died to give you life. As Jesus says, you must be born a second time. I turn away from all other gods. And I turn to Jesus. For now I know that Jesus, you are the way. You are the truth. And you are the life. Raise your hand tonight if you receive Jesus. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? For you are now a child of God. And we're seeing hundreds and hundreds of people receive Jesus every night that we're preaching the gospel. So we can't thank you enough for sending us. Calling all the nations here in India. Praise God that the gospel is the good news of Jesus. Hello, I'm Dr. John Boyd. You know, becoming a believer is a great thing, and yet, suddenly, you find a whole new life. Well, I have written a book to help you navigate all the newness of your faith in Jesus Christ, and it's called All Things New. Now, you can pick up a copy at callingallthenations.com. Have you heard the word gospel? I have heard the word gospel, yes. And what does it mean to you? Um, isn't it sort of like the truth, the heavenly truth, as far as I'm aware? Yes, I know what gospel is. What does it mean to you? It means the word of the Lord, basically. It's the book of God. You know, John, I believe a lot of people in the world are wondering, what does gospel mean and what is the gospel? In fact, up until I met Jesus that night, I truly didn't even know what gospel meant or what the gospel really was. So my question to you is, what does the Word of God say about the gospel? What is the gospel? I'm glad you asked, because uh, there's such a generality. You have multiple denominations going on today. Everybody's got their own kind of ideas about what the gospel is and would give you many definitions. I'm just going to go straight to the scripture. We find a perfect description of the gospel. I'm going to read this one. You notice I know many don't do this, but I'm going to read this one just to make sure everybody's online with it. If you have Bibles, they could look at the first Corinthians chapter 15. And this is what the Apostle Paul says is the gospel. Awesome. Okay? 
He says, now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. You want to underline that. If you hold, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as the f of first importance. Here it is. Here's the gospel. That Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm going to believe what the apostle has written to us, and if I'm going to believe that this is the Holy Spirit of God speaking through the apostle, whom he saved on, this, on the road and ordained to preach to the Gentiles, then I'm going to believe that the gospel is in capsule form this very simple statement, a strong statement. Jesus died for our sins, according to the scriptures, which means it's backed up by the, the law, the Old Testament, everything, the prophets that went before, the scriptures. He was prophesied to die for our sins. He's the one that they were prophesying about. That he was buried, he, it was no swoon theory here. It wasn't that he passed out or that his blood pressure was so low that his heart went to an almost, you know, you couldn't tell it was beating. No, he died, he was buried, and then on the third day, he rose again according to the scriptures. Again, backed up by the whole of the Old Testament testifying to the coming of the Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah. He died for our sins. He was buried. He rose on the third day. This is the gospel, which means good news. Yes. Now, isn't it good news that he died for our sins? And we don't have to carry those sins or, or even hope to see the, see the Father, you know, in heaven because we can't enter if we have sin in our life. Jesus took those sins away. He died. And I like what Paul also said uh, as, he, as he talked about the gospel in another way. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I mean, for heaven's sake, who would be ashamed of the gospel if they knew what it meant? Yes. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He said, why? It is the power of God unto salvation mm. for all people. Yes. First the Jew, this is who Jesus came to first by his own confession. Yes. And then to everyone, the Greeks, which then in, in, includes all Gentiles, you and me. And so we have it on, on his authority by the Holy Scripture that this is the power of God, yes. the gospel. That yes. simple little statement means that the Holy Spirit can work through that for salvation to those who believe. Wow. Now, that's the gospel. Yes. Now, why do... People think it's something else. Why would you hear somebody say, well, the gospel, that's just the Bible. I mean, that's, it's good news, and it is, brother. Wow. But the thing that has the power of God unto salvation, the thing that's lacking in many churches today that is not preached is that Jesus died for our sins. We're sinners. Yes. And that he was buried and he rose again, according to the scriptures. Now, that has the power of God. And when you use that, it is not about you. It's not up to you for that person to be moved and motivated and somehow brought to life by the Holy Spirit. No, that's God's work. Yes. It's the power of God. Wow. Wow. That is good news. You're watching. You've heard the message of Jesus Christ. Did you know that God loves you unconditionally? The Bible says he knit you together in your mother's womb. He knows everything about you. He knows everything that you've done in your life. And Jesus is God. He literally gave his life on a cross for your sins. Everything you've ever done that's bad, everything that's been evil against God, he has forgiven you on the cross. He shed his blood. He died and he rose again from the grave. And he's coming again soon. But the question is, do you know Jesus. Not do you know about him, but do you truly know him? I can tell you, my friends, I spent many years knowing about him, but I didn't know him. It wasn't until I said, Jesus, come into my life. I want to be born again. I want to be saved, that Jesus saved me. And you know he changed my life, and he can change yours. He can remember your sins no more if you'll just trust in him. You might think, oh, no, you don't know what I've done. I'm telling you, Jesus covers all sins. He paid the price for you. Will you trust in him? He wants to give you the gift of his salvation. The gospel is good news. 
And I want to lead you in a prayer to receive Jesus. Get it right with God today. He's the only way to have peace in life. And I want to lead you in a prayer right here where you are. No matter what's going on, just stop right where you are and pray this with me and place your trust in Jesus. Just say this with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gospel. Thank you that you're a God who created me and loves me and knows me. And I believe that you died, Jesus, on the cross for my sins. And I ask your forgiveness. I confess that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe you died and shed your blood to forgive me and rose again from the grave. And I ask that you'd come into me. I want to receive your Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. into my life. Come inside Mm -hmm. and change me and make your place in my heart. Thank you that now I know that I'm going to heaven and that I'm a born-again Christian. Thank you for saving me. I trust in you. I turn from my other life, and I turn to Jesus today. In your name I pray, amen. Hey, if you prayed that today, congratulations. You are a born-again Christian. You know Jesus Christ. And if you want to share your story with us, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at mystory at callingallthenations.com. Congratulations. Praise Jesus.
Hey everyone, if you enjoyed the music on the Calling All the Nations program, all of my music is available at callingallthenations.com. I have many albums on there. And listen, all the proceeds from my songs and my CD albums, they go directly to help us go to the nations to spread the gospel. They'll definitely be an encouragement to your walk with Jesus, and you're going to enjoy the music. Go to callingallthenations.com. Has it not been encouraging to hear all these people coming to faith in Jesus in India? It's right. just an awesome thing. That is what drives the gospel, the value of one soul. The fact that God loves every single person in this world and gave his life for the sins of the whole world. None of this at Calling All the Nations would be possible without our supporters, those who pray for us every day and actually financially send us That's to right. these people in the world who every time I go to a country say to me, thank you for coming to share about Jesus. Thank all the people that sent you to us to share Jesus Christ. John, that is the heartbeat of Calling All the Nations. That's why we go is because God wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And you know what they may not know when they're giving, they may be giving out of just goodness of their heart or something, but they're actually beginning to change nations for Jesus yes. Christ. This is what we believe our ministry is. We go, a few get saved, they share the word, and it's the gospel all over again. A nation has changed. Listen, we are being invited all over the world, to India, to Kenya, all over to the Philippines and all throughout the United States. We have a heart for this nation. We believe America needs to turn to Jesus right. to be their Lord and Savior. And so my heart is there because I grew up in church and didn't know Jesus. So when I speak to your local church, and we'd love to come where you are to share Jesus, or maybe you're a missionary, we want to come to your nation. Listen, we would love for you to be a part of Calling yes. All the Nations. We're a ministry family, and we want you to become a part of Calling All the Nations. Pray about that because you can make a difference. All of us working together, you sending us out, praying for us, seeing the results, and we get to come back to you and say, look at all these people that met Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, I believe Jesus is coming soon. Yes. The time is so short. This is the only message that saves the message of Jesus Christ. He's the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He wants all people to be saved. Let's go share the gospel around the world and become part of calling all the nations to Jesus Christ. We'll see you soon.